Go. I can't believe I'm 35 years old now, and one word I think would best describe it is bittersweet because it's gotten to the point where I lose track of my age once in a while, and yet still feel like I'm at my prime to do anything. I've never seen anything like it! This is what they call the transitional phase to becoming middle-aged, and that's kind of emotionally confusing because I'm either hearing my nieces saying I'm an older, fatter, balder man, while seniors are saying how it's awesome to be this young. I gotta tell you, it's not easy being in this state of consciousness because we're literally witnessing our idols, our parents and our teachers becoming seniors, and slowly but surely disappear from this world. What in heaven's name are you talking about? But as dark as it may seem, I think what saves us from this existentialism are the people we have around us. Besides my family, I've been lucky enough to still have a couple of my friends since high school, and from what I've been told, we're in it for the long haul. When I first met them, I was at a crossroads between two groups of friends. One were skateboarders who were heavy smokers and alcoholics, while the others were gamers who chilled in a massive man cave filled with games as far as the eye can see. It was kind of an easy choice, and ever since then, we seem to be insane. Separable. Ha! Gay! These guys introduced me to the greatest TV shows like Seinfeld and awesome animes like Berserk and Naruto. They got me into awesome JRPGs like Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, and now the Soulsborne series. All these products and their contents changed the way that I perceived the world, and that kind of experience is priceless. The writers and producers made sure to embed a sense of reality and truth in their storytelling. I see now that the circumstances of one's birth are irrelevant. It is what you do with the gift of life that determines who you are. You see, like most information, some parts just go in one ear and come out the other, while some have such an impact it stays with us forever. Like when Sephiroth kills Aerith and all hope seems lost for the world, or when Goku turns Super Saiyan for the first time and is stuck on a planet that's about to explode. These moments are for sure sad, and yet underneath them are great lessons of never giving up when life gets chaotic. I don't think I would be the same person if I never experienced them with my friends. Having conversations with them and getting their perspective was always great, and nowadays I consider myself lucky that it all happened just before the social media boom. It's a little disheartening to see that even with it, more and more people are feeling lonely, and the gaming community is definitely not immune to it. It's been a problem for decades, and I get it. There's this fear of exposure and the feeling of embarrassment that too many people think is a sign of weakness. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I remember having these trust issues, and it was only until I found friends who didn't have those barriers that I started to feel comfortable. I was changed for the better, and gaming was totally part of it. We used to watch trailers like Pokemon, and we'd be so hyped just before we got our hands on them. That thrill made it worth it to buy expensive games, because being content and really happy in those moments was the greatest return on investment. And some parents didn't really understand that at the time, but here here we are, decades later, talking about this nostalgia like it's heaven. When I think about it though, there was something so special about playing a couch co-op game while having random conversations. And to put it bluntly, it somehow made a really bad game feel like the best game ever. I fought on your grave. Compared to the 90s, the gaming industry has changed in a lot of ways with the oversaturated market and interconnectivity being in the palm of our hands. These days, one of the struggles I've had is finding good titles to play when my friends aren't around, and I figured the best option is buying ones that remind us why we love gaming in the first place. I'm no psychiatrist or anything, but it seems like doing that at this age comes with a weird psychological challenge or something. Since our friends were mostly part of that journey, I feel like some of us lose that identity and even motivation to play once they're gone. Some people think this is where we're supposed to grow up and somehow become socially active. But when you really think about it, it's a little more complicated case by case. It was never about how gaming made us friends, but about the quality of the friendships and how deep they are. Hell, I've seen people hate each other because of how competitive a game can be, and it says a lot about how shallow friendships can be. Whether we like it or not, these good friends are an extension of our personalities, and when they're gone, we might become direction and stagnant. We might become sad and in some ways even depressed. And there are some who are just immune to it because they're so used to people leaving them. I think when we have great people for a long period of time, there's always this social urge to be with them, and I feel like life makes more sense that way. The past few years since the start of COVID, something just changed in my life. It felt like everyone including me had no time to hang out, and while solitude is fine and all, playing games sometimes didn't feel the same. But I get it though, people are busy with their personal lives and children 
friends and careers and I obviously don't want to be like a burden or some third wheel. I mean sure, you could say go find players online and that's totally valid, but I can't be the only one to say that something just hits differently when they're physically here. I really can't tell you how crappy it is opening the door to my closet and seeing my board games not being used, or video games just lying there unplayed. What sucks even more is gaming companies releasing remakes of titles that my friends and I used to play, and we're only talking about it on social media. Now I'm not saying I can't play games without them, that's a totally different ball game, and I think many YouTubers covered it in their loneliness videos. All I'm saying is having good friends around amplifies the quality of our gaming experience. Some people just have no idea how emotional and nostalgic it can be anytime we get a chance to sit on the couch and go 20 rounds of Super Smash Bros, or pull an all-nighter playing Halo online. Those rare gatherings have the same hype as when games are announced during the Game Awards, and that skyrockets our dopamine levels. Now not to get too emotional here, but these little moments or specks of time are like pieces of puzzles that I need to feel whole, and with that comes massive support without any sort of guilt when playing games. I'm sure you know that most of the time we can't behave like that at work, and even sometimes with our own families because of the criticism we get. But with the guys it's plain and simple. We just never want our hangouts to end, and it sucks to cut gaming halfway because of curfews and schedules. In the grand scheme of things, I think video games provide a kind of escapism that some of us need, and yet sometimes we can never truly get that without having the right people around. With all that said, I know it seems redundant or immature to say, but if I had to choose, I would rather have my friendships back to the way they used to be than making new ones in the current social climate. What did you say? Okay guys, if you're thinking what I think you're thinking, the answer is... No, I'm not having a midlife crisis. It's just that the odds of finding good friends at this age in the real world is difficult. And I think part of the issue is that it's hard to tell if people want something to gain just because some things are going right in my life. Coming to bed, honey? Yes, dear. I mean, sure, perhaps I'm being too skeptical, and perhaps not everyone has an agenda. But when hyper-focused, career-oriented people are in my age group, it gets frustrating and almost hopeless to find friends that see us just for fun. I mean, I'm not kidding. A few years ago, I talked with someone I knew from high school, and in the first few sentences, I kid you not, he tried to get me to invest in his clothing business, and after I said no, I never heard from him again. Dude, I just wanted to play StarCraft. Who knows, perhaps I'm wrong this whole time and that's the normal way to make friends these days. You tell me. Or maybe I just haven't adapted to this so-called grown-up environment. I don't know, man. Sometimes it feels like I'm way past the age where it's natural to form that kind of bond with anyone new. And I really hope I'm wrong about it. Hell, you can go anywhere online and you'll find that's the reality for a lot of people. Now with all that said, having my friends this long taught me that being with good people from the start makes us better in the real world because we create moral standards that protect us from being deceived. If there's one thing you should take from this video, it's if you're in your mid-20s or beyond and you call up your buddies and they actually make time for you, you have no idea how good you got it. I think that's something we shouldn't ever take for granted, and I feel grateful that I still experience that, even though it is once in a while. These levels are kind of asshole. Oh jeez, oh no, no! What the? <laughs> you're kidding me! Anyways guys, that's all I got for today. I hope you enjoyed my video, and if you did, consider subscribing for more content. See ya!